What's up, people? So, I just came back from watching Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So, this will be a spoiler-filled review, or first thoughts video. So, if you have not seen the movie, skip this video, and or come back and watch it, because there will be some major spoilers in here, because that's the only way I can talk about movies. So, you have been warned. <laughs> but... Anyway, with that out of the way, Multiverse of Madness is it's been I've been pretty hyped for this movie for a while. Not as, quite as hyped as No Way Home, but pretty hyped, you know. Um, like I I I was excited when they first announced it. Like, ooh, Multiverse of Madness is the title. Watched WandaVision and thought Wanda was made so much more interesting than she was in any of the movies she was in before. So I'm interested to see where she went, and then No Way Home happened, and multiverses went crazy in that movie. So now we have this, where I assume the multiverse being broken there would affect this film somewhat, but surprisingly not that much. They only really referenced No Way Home that one time, but that, that was about it. But anyway, so to go through the plot, you know... You have this girl named America Chavez, or Chavez, I, I, uh, pardon if I'm saying it wrong, but, so, she's this being, this person who can literally travel through to the multiverse, travel through dimensions, and she's been meeting a bunch of Doctor Stranges that can, variants of him that can help her get through the whole thing, and... There's somebody that's trying to get her power. The movie reveals actually really early on who's doing it. It's Wanda Maximoff. So she's hunting her because her motivation, she like makes the motivation clear very, very early on where she wants to use America's power to get to another universe so that she can find her kids that she manufactured in WandaVision so she can get them back and live with them so honestly right off the bat i have to say that i already mentioned this is all given away pretty early because the pacing in this movie is really fast uh, i was surprised how fast this movie went and like i wouldn't say it's like rise of skywalker bad but it like moves from scene to scene really fast and like I remember before the movie came out, I looked at the runtime. I was like, really? I thought this would have been a lot longer, but no, like, just a little over two hours long. So, I thought it would have been longer, but I guess not. And, so, you know, you have Strange, our Doc Strange that we've, I guess, grown attached over the course of the movies. He's, um, gets to America and decides to protect her, you know, again, discovers what Wanda wants, and then, and Strange and America end up getting teleported to an alternate universe, where they, where in that universe, Strange is dead, and they meet up with an alternate Mordo, and, um, then they, he ends up, they end up getting arrested, meeting up with the Illuminati, I think it's called, and Cameo Fest, like, I was surprised, like, for a movie called Multiverse of Madness, like, where you could have so much fun with bringing in all these multiverse characters from all these other movies, surprisingly, they only brought in a few. Like, the one we all, all figured out was Sir Patrick Stewart coming back as Professor X, and they even, I even noticed when he showed up, they played the 90s X-Men theme, so that was a nice touch, and they also got Haley Atwell's Captain Carter from What If, and you have a, a new Mr. Fantastic, who I already cared about and already thought was a lot more interesting than in the Josh Trank movie, and you also have an alternate version of Captain Marvel, and crap this is one there's one other character that who's the first one wanda kills and i forgot what his what his, what his name was but crap i don't remember but so 
they talk to Strange about what they have to do, and Wanda ends up controlling the Wanda in that reality to come and fight. I kill. She kills everybody in the Illuminati. It's like, I was shocked to see them all die. Just, which by the way, isn't it funny that Patrick Stewart has played Professor X? He's died three times. This is the third time now where he's died playing the same character. So, uh, I thought that was kind of funny, even though I did gasp when he died, and also the way they killed Peggy was pretty violent too. Like. Hey, Wanda throws a shield through her. Like, this is honestly the most one of the more violent Marvel movies. He's like, like a lot of violence in here. I was just kind of like, this is Disney. <laughs> this is under, like, this Disney on this. Like, this gets pretty gruesome. Um, and then you have, oh crap. So, blah 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 blah. So, Doctor and America go find that book that they need, but then Wanda comes in and takes America and sends Strange and... Oh, and Christine Palmer, there's a variant of her. Strange and Palmer are sent to another universe, and Wanda is having to, you know, do her thing with America, and Strange fights another Strange who dies, and he ends up going into that book, The Darkhold, and... Ends up taking control of a zombie strange. So that's what that was about. And the climax happens. Wanda uh, finally realizes that she's become a monster. Like anytime she tries to do what she wants, tries to bring her kids back, it everything gets worse. Like her kids don't even recognize her when she comes into that other universe. So... Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, I think this movie suffered a similar problem the first Doctor Strange had, where every other character is more interesting than Doctor Strange himself. Like, I, I honestly thought Wanda was so much more interesting of a character. Like, I wanted to see what was gonna what she was gonna go through, and she ends up sacrificing herself. It looked like, though, I'm not a hundred percent sure if she's dead. And, oh, and America, of course, learns the controller powers. I guess that's another thing. And ends up getting Strange back. And he ends up repairing a watch. And he has a third eye, apparently. And then the credit scene comes in. And it goes with that one woman who... I don't know who that is. If anybody could tell me, let me know. But, yeah, this was... This is... Honestly, the thing I loved, I would say the thing I loved the most about this movie is this is directed by Sam Raimi, and I remember instantly when the movie started and you get the first action sequence, I'm immediately like, yep, this is a Raimi movie, I love it, where, yep, Raimi has this direction, you know, in when he did his, his Spider-Man movies where, you know, he'll have the camera close up to a person and... Just the way the camera would spin around a person and, like, go up close to somebody or far away. Like, that's all here. Like, Raimi was going all in on this. Like, just, just, yeah. I, uh, this is probably the most well-directed MCU movie. Like, this is one of the few MCU movies where I can tell that a director is behind this. Well, I guess James Gunn is another example. Oh, but... Oh, and Joss Whedon, so... I guess not that unique, but... Yeah, he's thankfully one of the directors who... lets you know that, yeah, this is a Sam Raimi movie... Just through his directing. And so I like that. And... Uh, um, oh, and the score is done by Danny Elfman. Not some of his best work, but... His music is still pretty darn good in this, I felt like. Like, there were callbacks to other musical themes, and... Yeah, again, I really enjoyed listening to it. Uh, so I believe I covered everything I have on Multiverse of Madness. Overall, this was a pretty good movie. It's... I'd have to, like, think 
I think I really need to rewatch it because again the pacing was really fast and I like I need to rewatch it it to, to like fully collect my thoughts but again I really enjoyed this movie it is good I would say it's an improvement over the first Doctor Strange where I actually did find myself caring about what was going to happen and. And I'm excited to see what happens next, since Strange has a third eye, apparently. And, uh, oh, and it looks, is that Mr. Fantastic that they got in here? Is that the same actor who's going to play Mr. Fantastic in that upcoming Fantastic Four movie? If so, sure, yeah, I'm glad about that. So, that's all I can think of for Multiverse of Madness pretty good. I would definitely recommend it. So, pace!